and um, he's going to talk about their friendship. And I also want to acknowledge a special guest here. Uh, we have the daughter of Roberto Salas, who is in the house tonight. And Tommy is here with her children. And what a special moment, I know, for her and her family to see his work up and to see all the appreciation here. The other thing I want to mention is if you do, are you inter if you're interested in one of the prints, uh, that t tonight, um, if you purchase a print, you will get a, a book on Roberto Salas, uh, and it's a $75 value, so you will get a free book along with your purchase of the print. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that first, and then you, you're going to go ahead and talk, and then you can introduce Rick. Okay. Right. Anyway, I just want to mention uh, Francisco Rivera. I met him in uh, 1999 on one of the trips I took to Cuba. I was walking around a, a small city near Baradero, near the beach, and it was a little town that is called Cárdenas, Cárdenas. And as I was walking around, I passed by in front of a, a art gallery, and I walked in, and I really liked his work. So they called him up, and he came on his bicycle real quick, and, and we worked out a deal. And I, every time I've taken groups to Cuba, I've always tried to take them to go see uh, Francisco Rivero to see if people want to buy some of his, some of his works. <clears throat> and uh, by coincidence, he's only, he lives about three houses away from Ilian Gonzalez's house. I don't know if you remember Ilian yes. Gonzalez, yes. the little boy that yes. made it to Florida when he was like five years old, his mother drowned and so forth. Anyway, <clears throat> I also met him and his father well, one of the trips to Cuba. <clears throat> but uh, I want to mention that uh, uh, Francisco Rivero studied two years in the Czech Republic. At that time, it was called Czechoslovakia because uh, at that time, uh, the Cuban government would send a lot of Cubans to go to either Russia or other Eastern European countries. And he went there for two years, but when he came back, engineering was not his pleasure. He wanted to get into art, so he developed, a, a, took a number of courses on design. And one of the things I really appreciate about Francisco Rivero is that he's always experimenting with different, different techniques, you know, from more traditional Mona Lisa in Cuba <laughs> to some far-fetched, almost cartoonish, whimsical, and he even has some that he's made some black and white with sand. So you can see some of those there that uh, are paintings. And we have some of the paintings that are either framed or with stretcher bars or with no frames at all, just canvas. So uh, I really appreciate uh, you uh, <clears throat> looking at these works. And uh, we've had a number of people that uh, find his work a very unique. Very it's in pretty bad shape. Um, and uh, so I went, uh, I went there, and um, uh, and I, I, I t quite frankly did not uh, fall in love immediately because I was kind of propagandized in my own mind. I mean, I'm going to Cuba. These guys are commies. These guys are rats, you know. And uh, then about six days into my trip, I was I, these are the most wonderful people I've ever met in my entire life. And so that on the seventh day, unfortunately, I had to go home. So a year later, we came back uh, to do the same thing uh, that we did, which was to celebrate the first Jewish Passover in public um, in, since the revolution, because in, um, now I'm going to get long-winded, but it's good, it's good information. Uh, because in, in 1961, all organized religion was banned because it was a, a, a power source. Um, and that revolutionary government did not want any power sources like the Catholic Church or the Jewish religion or the Greek Orthodoxes. But we can go on. Anyway, so we, we opened it up and it was pretty fun. Two years later, by the way, Fidel Castro attended the first celebration of Hanukkah at the same <laughs> temple. And since then, it's, it's become a, a, a major big deal. So it was cool. Um, so in 1996, uh, when I went back for the second time, uh, there was some liberalization. And the, uh, one of the liberalizations is that they could have flea markets uh, where, where Cubans could could sell goods in public. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, all retail was controlled by the government. Because it, 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 it is and was a totalitarian government. 
And so in those flea markets, I went to the flea markets, and there was a lot of things that were, a lot of things that were coming out of people's closets, basements, attics, etc. And, and although I wasn't interested in the old shoes and the old clothes, I was interested in the 1955 Sandy Koufax rookie card. Oh, and, and, you know, for three dollars. Uh, but also there were these stacks of photographs, eight by ten photographs, which were uh, press photos. And they were they were really magnificent. Not only did they tell a story with these these characters that we've come to know about, like Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. Uh, forget the politics tonight. They are characters, you know, and uh, and and in their own soap opera. And um, and they but they, the photographers were amazing. And this was a way that Fidel Castro communicated his activities in Cuba to the world and to try to legitimize his revolutionary government. Yeah. Uh, and, and But the photos were incredible. So I walked out with a, like a stack of them, and I had no idea, sorry, I should have shut that off. Uh, and so I walked out with a, a stack of them, not knowing who did the photos, where, where, anything, not anything. Mm -hmm. And over the next uh, year or so, I s started realizing that there were actually people's eyeballs that were behind those cameras and, and in those, from those eyeballs were real people and, uh, and did some research and I found that there were four, four prominent, prominent photographers uh, who were, became known as, as uh, uh, Fidel Castro's private photographers. One of them was Osvaldo uh, Salas, the grandfather of uh, uh, Tammy and the great grandfather of the, you know, the boys over there, and uh, another one was Alberto Diaz, who became known as Corda. You know him because the the most famous image in the world, which is the image of Che Guevara, that you've seen on every. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. Thank God. Uh, the the image of Che Guevara, which you've everybody seen, uh, that was Corda. Another one by the name of Liborio Noval, uh, who was one of uh, Roberto Salas's dearest, dearest mentors and friends, mm -hmm. and uh, Raul Corrales. So um, I, went, I went back and I went on a mission to meet them all because, mm -hmm. to see if they were around, because who are these guys, all right? Well, unfortunately, Osvaldo Salas had passed uh, in the early 90s, and, but uh, the other th three were, were around. Uh, I was able to meet two of them, Noval and Corrales, but, in the process, I met Osvaldo Salas' son, Roberto, uh, whose work you see on the walls tonight. Roberto was born in the United States of America because his father had come to the United States from Cuba and, um, and picked up a camera and became a photographer uh, because there was a need in the Cuban and the Latino community for a photographer. Who was going to do the weddings? Who was going to do the graduations? Who was going to do anything? And then. The, the, um, the Latino Americano or the Latin uh, newspapers and magazines had nobody to make photos in New York. He took that opportunity, specializing in, um, in, in sports, great boxing photographer, amazing baseball photographer. And, and then there was this little dude who used to come with him to the baseball games. And, and in fact, um, you know, that's how Roberto Salas learned photography. Uh, in 1955, a guy by the name of Fidel Castro came to raise money in New York for this, for this revolution. Can you imagine somebody coming? I mean, we all have gone to benefits for our churches and our temples or our politicians. Can you imagine a guy coming to uh, your city and say, I'm going to throw a revolution <laughs> and I need some money. <laughs> but that's what he did. He, he raised money and that's, that's where uh, he was introduced to Osvaldo Salas who found him an amazing individual. And so much so that Osvaldo moved back to Cuba to join the revolution as a photographer and that's how he played his role. And then Roberto came back very soon thereafter as a 17 year old. And, and became his father's grip and also a very, very fine uh, photographer and was the fifth uh, person known as Fidel Castro's private photographer. But in the meantime, you know, you, we all get branded, so he, he was one of the private photographers. He was a hell of a, a, a Roberto is still a, a hell of a photographer. Um, he's 80, 80, 
82? How old is it? 82 now? 81. 81. Oh, tell, him I, tell him I told him everybody was 82. He'll love the part. He's 81 years old. He lives in Havana and is still active making photos. Uh, this series is the Campesino series. And he went into the country and, and uh, photographed people uh, posing in, uh, in, in a, it was like their own personal baseball card. Uh, it's a really simple idea. He'd hate me uh, to refer in that way, but that's what they are. They're beautiful works. I have those four down there. I have some black and whites of them on my wall at home. They're fabulous. Um, anyway, he's a, he's, he is uh, the only living photographer now from that revolution era, era um, and, uh, and still alive, kicking, and, uh, and very active, and uh, he's become a very, very dear friend. Uh, there's lots of stories, but I only had five minutes, and I think I've taken ten. So en enjoy yourself. Again, the, the um, oh, the book. The book. We did this. This is our COVID project. We did this during COVID. So I, I was sitting around during the COVID like everybody else was sitting at home going, okay, what am I going to do for any time? So I called him. I said, hey, man, it's time to do a book because we can. And so we did this book, and this is our COVID project. And this is... This is his first and only true monograph. I'm, we're very pleased that we made it. It is self-published. We, we printed a couple hundred of them, and a few of them are here tonight. And um, so it's, you can, uh, and anything you see in here um, that isn't on the wall, uh, we can arrange to have that printed and, and delivered for you at the same price that the ones on the wall are same size. Okay. I want to talk about uh, those those two black and white photos there, and then there's two additional ones. Those are by Jose Rogelio Ramirez. He's from Sacramento. My friend. Your friend. Oh, oh, close okay. personal friend. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, I met uh, Jose in uh, 2005 when Roberto Salas was invited by my university to come to Sacramento State. And there's a number of uh, former colleagues here and uh, anyway he was invited and we had a, a photography exhibit and we kept in touch with uh, Roberto Salas ever since then but Rogelio Ramirez Jose, has uh, done you can see the black and white he's used a different technique he's originally from San Francisco but lives in Sacramento and also in Mexico and uh, his technique, he likes to do what they call uh, street photography, although he's tried weddings, he's tried the landscape and other things, but he prefers street photography. And uh, these are, are beautiful little pieces in black and white, and you can see two other additional ones behind in, in that uh, case there. So thank you once again, Janice, uh, wherever you are, I appreciate it. Thank you very thank much you for sitting there for Yolo Arts. Thank you again for coming and appreciate it. And please enjoy yourself. We still have some more food, right, Janice?